uh, away from home this season. Let's see how he's feeling after that 6-1 win at Allen Road. The impressive display. What pleased you most about it? Oh, I don't know where to start. The whole game was, was brilliant. Um, a couple of tough moments where we had to... Um, I think it's especially Aronson's shot in the second half after we conceded um, an unnecessary goal, but these kind of things can happen. Um, but apart from that, we were super in control of the game. We, were, we played brilliant, calm. Counter pressing was the best for, for ages, ages. Um, loved it. Favorite situation of the game is 92nd minute. We lose a ball and four players chase the, the boy, the poor boy from Leeds on the ball down, and that's absolutely fantastic. So, um, yeah, we were stable today and um, played good stuff and scored incredible goals. Seven shots, I think, on target, and six of them going in and, and being the goals. I mean, a lot has been talked about about away form for you this season, but right. is that somewhat the blueprint going forwards now? Yeah, but it's not about. And look, I, I'm not really bothered about scoring six or whatever. It's not. It's not too important. It's about the performance, and the performance was a winning performance. It was clear we have to win the game. Can, I heard now when I came here that there was a few discussions with the ref about the first goal. I'm not sure, but that was not a game Leeds should win. So it was a clear game we should win, and that's what I wanted to see. Um, and again. Um, when we score goals in moments, we know that we are able to do that. Much more important, that it was the best game of the season. That most important is how we defend. And I saw so many hard, hard, hard sprints after we lost the ball to close down. Robo was not once alone in a one-one situation. Trent was not once alone there. Hando and Curtis closed them down. Both wingers closed them down. We had finally again. We really defended ball orientated. Let our players go there. Two we won situations, three we won situations, like in the 90 second, four we won situations where we win the ball. That's it. Then you have to write rhythm. Then you have to write feeling for the game. And then you can play football, and that's what the boys did tonight. Just a word on Diogo Jota in particular. He's had to wait a long time, I think over a year, to score. He got two tonight. You must just be over the moon for him. Yeah, um, top and set up the first. Huh? So, uh, what was the first? No, the second. The second goal, I think. Yeah, set it up um, for one the ball back and set it then up. Um, super for more, super, super game of him. And so much space for improvement. As you can see in moments, the rhythm is not really there. That's not the same what we have to get for uh, for Lewis and um, these kind of things. But it's really helpful that the boys are all there. They, put, they push each other a lot in training sessions. When, they, when you see, OK, if I don't train well, then he can play, he can play, he can play. That changed everything, to be honest. And now they're finally all back. Hopefully they stay in a team today. Tough decisions for the lineup. The boys on the bench. Nobody was really happy because everybody, a lot of players, would have deserved to start tonight after a long training week. So very comfortable situation for me, probably first time. Um, and now we have to keep going. With that and the players coming back in the form you're showing at the back end of the Arsenal game and this game in particular, do you feel like there is a chance for a late push for a top four place, a European no spot? Look for that. You always need results of other teams. That's uncomfortable stuff in that, so we have no clue. They might win all the games and we can win all the games and stay still, but are we now eight or what? I don't know. Uh, no chance to change anything. Um, so um, brightness still in front of us has, uh, I think, a game less. So there's nothing we really have to be concerned about. We have to play really good football. So, um, and that's what we expect from us and that's what we have to do and then we get results. If we get results, we can have a look at the table at the end of the season where we end up. So, but it will go on after that season. There will be another season and to, to all the informations we get now, all the not so good informations from the long part of the season and the good ones from now, they are very helpful and we need them and that's why we should give it a proper An away win and a big one at that. How welcome, how well deserved in the end? Yeah, I think especially second half uh, we played really well although we conceded that, that goal. We kept possession a lot of the times. We tried to, to find uh, ourselves in good positions. I think we scored great, great goals and uh, I think we deserved the win obviously. Liverpool have struggled in games like this away from home this season, haven't they? What have you done so right tonight that hasn't always been the case, do you feel? Yeah, some games we looked really good and others we cannot uh, really click, especially away from home. But that's part of the past and what we can do is do things like tonight, so improve and do games like this because we are able to.
Those first two goals coming when they did in the space of four minutes, they were game changers, weren't they? Yeah, finally. Uh, it's been a hard season for me, for the team, and it uh, was a great relief as well when I could score my first Prem goal this season. Yeah, sum up your emotions when you saw that one go in. It's been a while, as you say. Yeah, uh, it was a, a, mi a mix, uh, but good feelings, obviously. I, I always want to be involved. I did an, an assist first half, but uh, I like to score more, so I'm really glad I could do it tonight. And then along comes another. What was it you were saying this week about emptying a ketchup bottle? <laughs> yeah, the, that's what the Santos Ronaldo said, and it really stuck in my mind all these years. And uh, I think football is unpredictable, and these are the things that we like in this football game. Things can change very quick. Just finally, I know it's a long shot, but does a big result like this rekindle faint hopes of a top four finish? Yes and no. I think we had great results this season, uh, great uh, score lines, 7-0, uh, 9-1 uh, or 9-0, whatever it was. And, uh, so we had these results before. Uh, we just need to, to stick with our feet on the ground because next one is a completely different game. Good night for you and the team. Well done tonight. Thank you. Indeed. I'm not sure they're allowed catch up though these days, Thomas. Are they <laughs> these Premier League players? Yeah. Just a little bit now and again. Tiny bit, yeah. Yeah. Well, he's allowed. He's allowed a celebration tonight because at 32 games for somebody of his abilities, I know you love stats. It's an extraordinary <laughs> start, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yes, and um, he's had a hard season um, with injury worries, and he's looked as if he's had injury problems. Actually, I think he's taken his time to get back. So, and. It's, I thought in the first half he wasn't at his best either. So to get a couple of goals and to get that little bit of, you know, enjoyment back and that bit of confidence, I think it'll really help him because he was a superstar player for Liverpool last year and the, and the year before when he joined. Um, but injuries do happen and injuries curtail people at times and it does take people a long time to get back to full fitness. And especially when the team is not playing as well as they have done. So I'm thrilled to bits personally for him. Yeah, you were saying that yesterday, weren't you? You never felt right the first three, four, five games after a long injury. No, I, I marvel at some people that, that bounce back straight from injuries. You know, they can be out for two, three months and all of a sudden they play their first game back and they're just like, they, they've never been away. It used to take me three or four games to feel as if my touch was like really back to where it, it should be. I just felt a little bit out of sync for, for two or three games. So, and as Mac has said, Jota's probably looked like that as well throughout the season. Um, everybody's different, but no, hopefully that gives him the confidence now in his body and his mind to now, uh, to now kick on. Well, two very confident finishes from him in the second half, weren't they, Thomas? Definitely. Uh, just talked about that uh, the first one is... Uh, it looks easy. Uh, and I think uh, Max like maybe came up so the, the ankle was good for him to bend it around him, uh, but you still need to put it in there and that... that perfectly weighted uh, finish, I think, is, is key. Yeah, I think less is more in this situation. You don't need to hit it hard because you're wanting the goalkeeper to, to go down. You, you know you're going to lift it high and wide. So you, you take the weight off of anything and, uh, and that gives you more of the goal to hit. If he hits this hard now, he hits it straight into the goalkeeper. Mm. So you need to almost float it and take your time and, and let the goalkeeper dive out the way in many ways. So lovely goal. Do you know it was? As long as, you, if, as, long as you, you pick the right finish there, it's actually quite an easy finish. Mm. But uh, the hard thing is, is choosing the right one. This was a little bit scruffy. <laughs> Curry, but my yeah, it comes you... off the bottom of his shin, so uh -huh. forth, doesn't it? What I would say is that Liverpool kept the ball for 20, 30 passes before this final you know, shot by Jota and goal, uh, and goal. And it was a brilliant goal. Liverpool scored wonderful goals this evening, which was nice to see. Listen, we can dissect Leeds and what they should have done. And there's, we'll be here till tomorrow evening discussing what they should have done and who should have ran and closed down. But let's marvel on Liverpool keeping the ball and scoring really nice goals because mm. a lot of them, they were back to the best. You know, breaking quickly. Every time they broke from, you know, a, a defensive corner or a free kick, they looked as if they were going to score. They were back to that red arrows, just flying forward, looking really dangerous. We talked about before that Liverpool, when they are their best, is when there's a little bit of space to run into and they can this half transition after a counter press or when they're winning on the edge of their own box and then they're going forward. And I think we counted score four goals in transitions. Mm -hmm. And when Liverpool does that, then they are untouchable. And we're talking about Diaz back tonight, which is a great boost, 14 minutes he got. But, but Jota, as Maka says, was a really important player when he was flying. He could, between now and the end of the season, be like a new signing in that yeah, form. Yeah, well, Liverpool have got some fine attacking players at the moment. Um, 
yes, people hark back to, to what they had a few years ago, but now um, they've got a, a variation of a lot of players um, and a lot of them scored tonight as well, got on the goal sheet, which is always a benefit when you're, uh, when you're attacking players, get on the goal scoring sheet. Absolutely. And one of those, Cody Gakpo, who opened the scoring, is waiting to talk live to us now at Ellen Road. Cody, uh, thanks for joining us. Well done as a team, well done personally with your goal. That was, uh, that was pretty clinical in the second half. Uh, yes, um, I think it was a, not a good start of the second half, but uh, after the, the goal we conceded, we, we did it really well and uh, yeah, we just kept going for goals and uh, yeah, we did uh, some clinical finishes. And as we were just saying, all the attacking players on the score sheet must be delighted tonight. Yeah, I think uh, for an attacker it's always nice to get on the, on the sheet and today it was four, I think, in total. So yeah, that's amazing. A, a variety of attacking players now in that Liverpool squad uh, and you can play in, in one or two positions in that front line as well and maybe even a little bit deeper uh, but you're playing more central um, this season do you like it there? Yes um, it was uh, I had to adapt uh, in the beginning to this because I was used to play on the left but um, yeah I like it there I get in uh, in some spaces that I can turn in the middle and then uh, drive uh, forward um, breaking the lines and uh, yeah I like it. What about your goal tonight? I mean, Trent Alexander-Arnold loves being in that situation, doesn't he? Yeah, it was a good cross from him and, uh, yeah, it was a, a good tap in from me. So, uh, yeah, really nice. Here's his assist. You can see it now? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good, good cross. <laughs> and, yeah, I didn't have to do that much, but uh, always nice to get these goals. Yeah, would have been disappointed if you missed that one, my friend. But um, Whew, yes, <laughs> I, I was just noticing as well on one of the other goals, actually, that Jota's second goal. I, I noticed that, that even though you're in a central position, you were still making that run into the six-yard box, which actually freed up the space for Jota. And I think I like to see that from a centre forward, always getting in those positions. Because if you're not going to, you know, in that situation, you scored the goal, but sometimes it'll get pulled back for the on-running midfielder as well. Yeah, I think. Um... Sometimes you have to make the runs for, for somebody else and uh, open up spaces and that's what we try to do in training and yeah and that's what I have to do sometimes as a forward just to, to run uh, in, in the six yard box and uh, open up space for somebody else and today it works out and Shota scored a, a great goal. Cody, it's Maka. That performance reminded me a lot of the Manchester United uh, performance. How important it is now to take it forward and be more consistent? Not just you, the team. Yes. Um, uh, I think it's the most important thing now that we uh, that we enjoy the win, of course, but that we still keep uh, focused to to put a, another good performance on in the next game and uh, yeah, not uh, not not be satisfied with this one and keep going, keep going because we have a lot, still a lot to play for um, and we have to just try to win every match. Very well done tonight. Thanks very much, Nick. Yeah, well done, mate. Well done. Thank you very much. Uh, he opened the scoring. Let's just um, remind everyone of the law and clear up, because again, Leeds fans were probably screaming, saying, well, that was handball against Trent Alexander-Arnold. Yeah, and if the referee blows his whistle and says handball, then I don't think any of us are going to be sat here and say, oh, it was a terrible decision. I mean, but I do think it was, uh, it was, it was ball to hand. I don't think there was any intention whatsoever um, for, for, for Trent Alexander-Arnold to, to handball it. It bounces straight into his arm and off they go. And, and of course, we know the rules as well that because it wasn't the goal scorer that the ball came uh, off the hand and it wasn't direct goal from it, then even if he assists, it's, it's absolutely mm -hmm. fine. So I think the, the uh, referee and I think VAR were, were right to allow it. Yeah, VAR checked it, deemed it not deliberate, Michael. Yes, and I think um, we all agree with that. If the, as, as Michael said, if the referee deemed that it was handball in just in normal play, fine, we'll have no qualms about that. Um, but once the ball goes in the back of the net, VAR will not get involved in that and, and they shouldn't get involved either when it's when there's a passage of play and it, you know as, as Michael said it didn't influence the goal straight off did it? Two for Jota, two for Salah as well Thomas and as we showed in the first half Leeds didn't help themselves at times tonight. No they they, they didn't um, I think uh, two great goals in general from from Salah uh, I think the first one here is is, is a great finish we, we talked about it a bit earlier that Jota he doesn't set him up perfectly but in the end it's perfect mm. for his left foot where he can bend it around the, the keeper. So I think it's a, a classic top quality mm. finish from, um, uh, from Salah. Uh, and again, we see one of the, the counter-attacks here where three, three can't 
can't do that against Liverpool. Uh, yeah, and th we mentioned it at half time. The, the Strauch should have come across to let the ball run inside of Salah without him getting a tackle away. It was really disappointing. It looked strange when it happened. Mm. So you wonder why it, you know, why it did happen. Why didn't he just follow Salah across the pitch and usher him out? Mm. But as um, you see Jürgen's reaction here, but. Um, I mean, his next goal was another brilliant goal, wasn't it? It was an individual move. And this is the one that, you know, Thomas really liked, how Liverpool break from here. Yeah, definitely. You see that the pace and the runs going forward. I think they're playing five um, versus four now. This ball in from Robertson is fantastic. Mm. Gakpo's ball, composure to Salah and a great finish. That's a mm. top, top goal. I mean, again, you can pick holes in them. You see Mark Rocker, the number eight in the centre, yeah. just slows down, jog, jog, jog. Look at Robertson, he's off. Yeah. And Rocker stutters again, and then he decides to run. It's too late. <laughs> and maybe Gakpo's he would have yeah, yeah. dropped down a he close got, He would have got yeah. Gakpo. Yeah. But again, you don't want to... You know, I don't want to go too harsh on Leeds. They'd gone at this stage and they were all over the place and everybody was culpable at some stage across the pitch. But mm. Liverpool were devastating breaking forward. Yep, 26 for the season, uh, four Mo Salah, nine in six now in his <laughs> career against Leeds. Big smiles all round, Jurgen Klopp, one of them. Uh, he's had some eating parts to Jurgen Klopp's reaction there, Thomas, particularly where he's talking about the pressing and the energy in the 92nd minute. That, I think, it's spot on. I'm pretty sure that's the first clip he will show uh, tomorrow or when they are evaluating the game. I think that's key for the way he wants to play. We spoke about it before the game, that... They've lacked energy and intensity in the pressure. They don't press anymore. Or we haven't seen this consistent. Today they're back on it. Mm. I think it was spot on in terms of the counter-pressing, intensity, the willingness to run forward, uh, willingness to run towards the ball. I think it was, it was good to see that from you. And he's talking about the competition for places. We saw Diaz come on. We saw Nunes, of course, come on with him and get the sixth goal. Yeah. And they've got that competition now. All the attacking players Well, that's great, tonight. isn't it? You know, we've got, well, Trent's sort of move from his right-back position inside. Nice finish from Darwin Nunez, because he needs goals as well. He gets chances, doesn't he? He missed a big chance against Arsenal last week. Um, good run here, lovely ball by Trent again. But as Michael said before, what you've got, you've suddenly got lots of competition for places. Trent's now gone into midfield. Thiago's come on. So suddenly they don't look bereft of, you know, midfield players. Yes, they're going to bring a few in, because a few are out of contract and will leave. But it doesn't look as bad as it once was feared when you've suddenly got three superstar forwards on the bench. You've got a great midfielder who's won everything coming off the bench in the last 10 minutes. You've got, a, you know, Trent maybe going into midfield if need be in certain games. And, you know, that's what you see about his, um, you know, his, his, his assists. But, yeah. you know, a really good night all round. Decent player in second behind yeah. Steven Gerrard. I there, definitely got more than that. It must have been before the Premier League started. <laughs> yeah. The old first division. What about yeah. the other ones before the Premier League? <laughs> 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 I forgot. Football was invented, wasn't it, by the Premier League? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fifth, forgot fifth, it. Moving swiftly on. 50 <laughs> Premier League assists uh, for Trent Alexander-Arnold. Again, we saw him at times in this role tonight, Michael. Is this got some longevity about it? Well, people, lots of people have been yearning for him to be uh, a midfield player full stop. Um, obviously, he's playing in a, in a position where he is a, he's a right back, but then in possession, he'll, he'll drift in on certain occasions and, and, and add numbers into that position. And when he gets in these positions, there's not many players in the world that have got a better array of passing than, than him. So it could be something that we see more of, yeah. Yeah, I think Liverpool like to dominate the ball and when you get that extra midfield player or extra body in the midfield, then uh, you can control possession a lot more. And when you've got someone as talented as that as a manager, that must be a temptation, Thomas. I, I, I totally agree. I'm, I'm sitting and thinking, hmm, maybe play him as a right back, but when they're in possession, six, eight, flexible, this is a fantastic assist for, for Nunez. Uh, pl play him uh, there against uh, the team they know they will control and, and dominate and against the better teams, maybe play him in midfield. I think the future for him could be in the midfield. Um, mm. I understand how they want to want to play and all that and, and he's doing a lot of things it, and it's not only we speak, we a lot, sometimes you're after trend, oh, not me, but a lot of so-called experts mm. that he maybe should defend better. But uh, it's also a little bit down to the way Liverpool play, mm. which we say when they are yeah. on top, they are for me, like today, unplayable. One of the best teams in the world that has shown consistently over the last years. But he's, they're so advanced, there's so big gaps they have to defend. Mm. And Jürgen just said it right today, 
it was not one situation where Robertson and Trent were one v one. There was always doubling up, always someone down to help. I think that's key as well. Yeah, some of the criticism has been over the top, yeah, haven't they? Yeah. I mean, let's be honest, some of it is ridiculous. Um, but the fact that he can, he has got the ability to move from right into central areas when it's on and when it's free and when there's space, won't happen every game. But the fact that he can go and do that and assist like he has done at such a young age is absolutely incredible. Mm. Jürgen Klopp was asked about the top four there. I mean, the craziest this season has been, if Liverpool win the remaining games, could you see a twist? Could you see... Something happening? Well, I mean, off the top of my head, I don't know all the other fixtures, but we know that some of the big boys have to play each other. I think Liverpool have played a lot of the top four, top five teams. So they could and should go on a run, but we just don't know, again, what Liverpool were going to get. Of course, Forest, West Ham, they're favourable. Tottenham's at home. Fulham's at home. You know, Brentford, I don't want to... Very yeah, difficult. Believe Brentford. Brentford. a very <laughs> difficult game. Yeah. The most difficult game they've got, <laughs> Brentford. The mighty bees turning up at Anfield. But, you know, on paper... With a tactical genius in the dugout. With a tactical genius, yeah. But on paper, it looks... You know, yeah. they look winnable games, don't they? And as, as Jürgen said, who knows what the other teams are going to do against each other? Yeah, I mean, that is a lovely run-in, isn't it? With all due respect, it's a lovely running for them. And if they did win every game, then they're going to get top four, I fancy. Um, but it's a big if. They're too inconsistent. They have been all season. So why all of a sudden mm. are they going to go and win, you know, eight or nine games on the spin? So I can't see it happening. But you could say it's uh, there's still a little flicker and a little chink of... Uh, Light at the end of the tunnel. OK. Well, the other side of the story, of course, another defeat for Leeds. As I say, they've conceded 16 in their last four games alone. Here's the view of Javi Gracia. Defeat. Um, where did it all go wrong for you today? Yeah, the hard to accept uh, the game of today, the, the result as well. Uh, nothing to say, only uh, uh, we... Didn't we lose the, the composer during the game? We tried in the beginning. I think maybe the, the first goal, the goal that opened the game, maybe is coming from handball. But after uh, this this result, you know, nothing to say. Only uh, try to 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 improve for the next game because we need it. You have conceded 11 goals in two home games in a row. Are you worried about the impact that could have? on the players at such an important time of the season? Yes, of course. It's something we need, need to work on it and try to improve because it's something we didn't do in the, in the previous games and now we are in the most important part of the season and we have to be more.